Thank you. Thank you, PLC Group, for giving me this opportunity and we will be proud of being here. This is getting an opportunity to speak uh, before Dr. Rajiv Chawla, before Dr. Kamal Banerjee, and our Deputy President, Dr. Sunil Gupta. Uh, I would like to start, uh, of course, Dr. Army, good friend of mine. I would like to start with my gratitude to Professor Shishya. So, in the next 30 minutes, I shall be talking about the management of hyperglycemia and pregnancy, what is the role of oral therapy, and what are the new advances. This is a sentence's declaration which has given us an insight that we should achieve a pregnancy outcome in a diabetic woman that approximates that of the non diabetic woman. Very few of us may be knowing that what is the new non diabetic women look on In 2019, GDM uh, it has been known that GDM complicates a substantial number of pregnancies, it was very well known fact, and we could know that global prevalence of the hyperglycemia in pregnancy in the age group of 20 to 49 was estimated to 20.4 million, or we can say 15.8% of the lifers. 83.6% of them were gestational diabetes. And this is enough to say, all women should be screened for gestational diabetes even if they have no symptoms. All pregnant women should be screened for GDM. Not only those who are living in this particular part of the world, obviously this particular part of the world is having more prone or metabolic diseases. Obviously we say that those who are of the Asian ethnic origin, they should be screened for the gestational diabetes. But I wish to say that every woman, whatever part of the world she is belong that it is must to be screened for the gestational diabetes if she is pregnant. Managing GDM is not only to save two lives, but also with a primary prevention for the next generation having to diabetes. It helps in identifying mothers with no diabetes in the future. Dr. Jessica says that GDM predicts the future diabetes. And of course, we can reduce the incidence of type 2 diabetes in the Generations to come if they control and do not allow to occur decision diabetes. We can say, see here that percentage of the preterm delivery were increasing in comparison to uh, or uh, together with the HV levels. We can see that the third dimensional HV level C is directly correlating with the increasing trends of the pre-cancer, with the increasing trends of the HPV in the other cancer, we can see that freedom delivery rate is also This is not only, we can see that consensus is not there among world organizations which are recommending for the diabetes management. Dr. Samarkand has very well made it clear that diabetes with diabetes should be is not very really much the consensus among KDG, ACOG and NIGHT. But what is with us in our own uh, India, our own industry, that recommends very clearly that for diagnosis, two hour post glucose should be 140 or more than that, but for management, two hour post primary after any meal should be 120 mg per decibita for less than that. Diagnosis of gestational diabetes with two hour post glucose more than 140 mg per deciliter and treatment is worthwhile with a decreased microsomia rate, fewer emergency sedated section, serious perinatal morbidity, and can also improve the women's health related to the body of diet. Elevated postnatal glucose is actually that which is more predictive for the potential for fetal morbidity compared with the fasting or pre-cardial value. Therefore, post-cardial value should be given more. Uh, uh, more care in the pregnancy and they should be more watchful. Therefore, fasting glucose value alone do not predict the need for the pharmacological therapy. 80 to 90 percent women with GDM can be effectively managed with a diet and exercise. Women with normal BMI, which is ranging between 19.8 to 26, has been recommended to gain a total of 11.4 to 15.9 That is the usual factor. We expect that women can gain up to 10 to 15 kg weight in the pregnancy. But if the woman is overweight, then weight gain recommendation is only up to 6.8 to 11.4 kg. 
in the obese women, those who are carrying the BMI more than 29, are permitted to gain weight only up to 7 kg. For women at high risk for excessive weight gain and interventions need to begin with the first trimester. As Dr. Samantha uh, has very correctly said, this is the first trimester we should be very much watchful. Weight gain in the first trimester is more predictive for the infant weight than the weight gain in the third trimester. So we should be very much alert about the first trimester. And there has been one study which has been published recently. Uh, women, those who are keeping at the time of organogenesis their glucose level, their karma glucose level under 8 or less, they are not going to develop gestational diabetes in their pregnancy and they are somebody to be more safe. So we should not be having any, uh, having any implication to increase the calories in the first trimester. There should be an additional 340 kilocalories per day during the second trimester and 452 kilocalories per day during the third trimester is So as it is a user practice, as the pregnancy starts, the women is just exposed to heavy calories, this practice should not be continued for more. Now the more further recommendations for the treatment of GD. Most women can manage GDM with lifestyle intervention alone that we know. Pharmacotherapy should be initiated if glycemic control is inadequate or failed. Almost all organizations, all recommending organizations of the world say that insulin is the most preferred medication for keeping hyperglycemia in pregnancy. May it be GDM or may it be hyperglycemia in pregnancy or existing diabetes. ADA does not recommend any other than insulin for management of the hyperglycemia in pregnancy. Although ACOG and NICE guidelines recommend glycoride and metformin can be considered for the management of gestational diabetes if patient is not ready to take the insulin. Let's talk about the considerations for use of oral antidiabetics in pregnancy. If we really wish to give the oral antidiabetic in the pregnancy, what should be our aim and what do we really want from the oral antidiabetic? We want that this glycemic control should be as good as we can achieve with our insulin. This should not produce the risk of maternal as well as neonatal hypothyroidism. We also wish that oral antidiabetics should be devoid of teratogenic effect, good neonatal outcome, and of course should be approved for use in pregnancy so that doctor may not be lined up into some uh, activities of the medical. Mm -hmm. Oral antidiabetic drug studies in the pregnancy, what the data says, what the evidence says, there are only three drugs which have been studied in the pregnancy. Sulfonyl you can include only the given the mind which has been studied in the pregnancy that is supposed to be working from, by stimulating the insulin release from the beta cell. Therefore, it has been seen that Indians, especially the Indian ethnic uh, origin people, those who are already having the high insulin resistance, they are already having the hyperinsulinemia, even in the pregnancy also, how much they can be benefited with the given mind, it is this still not sure. Sure. And given the mind has been found to be causing further hyperinsulinemia, which may become one of the important reasons of the fetal law in many of the women. As far as the biometrics are concerned, metformin has been approved by many of the organizations to be used in the pregnancy, which improves the insulin resistance and promotes the peripheral utilization of the glucose in the body. Atharmos has also been studied by uh, one of very important member of our industry, Dr. Antanakshi. She has done the study on Atharmos, which is supposed to be reducing the glucose absorption. Being in carbohydrate, and we like in the a better option, but the evidences are very different. So if we talk about the living tonight, which is also known as the dry diet, lot of complications, lot of evidences are already there. The laser is associated for the first person who has compared the living tonight with insulin and found that 82% of the living tonight patient and 88% of the insulin patient could achieve the level of the control. So, given the light was just on equivalent, we can say that it was not different than the insulin as far as the achievement of the glycemic target is concerned. The same author has found no significant transport of given the light in either the maternal to fetal or fetal to maternal direction. Here, the word significant should be noted. He did not say there is no transport of the given the light 
there is no ceiling in the kind of the later study, we have been found that some part of the system is crossing the people's essential value. When we talk about the Indian experience regarding the living the mind comparison with the ice in the treatment of premium, very little conclusion of the study of premium is for the treatment with premium. Out of them, then the ceiling to the mind is 13 degrees. Maximum dose of the living the mind was observed by 5 milligrams. No statistical significant difference between the two groups in terms of care, mean age, BMI, gestational genes, mean birth weight, or blood insulin level, blood glucose of the neonate in both the groups were in a cut outcome. So, given combined and insulin were equally effective in achieving the food glycemic control. But at the same time, this has also been seen, many people lost their figure if they lose that food My comment. This is a weekly study which has been a very popular study has been published in around 2008 onward in the NHS by by the Roman and their association. This study was a very landmark study which has actually reduced the use of the metformin during the pregnancy. Over half the metformin treatment group was able to maintain life control on oral antibiotics and woman and mother form a preferential insulin therapy. Obvious injection and never been preferred over the world. Evidence suggests that the formula is low risk in pregnancy and may even have a very special effect in some form. Robin said that and demonstrated that the formula treatment was associated with lower maternal weight gain, which is especially beneficial in women with gestational diabetes, who are likely to be overweight on obese and are at risk of gaining more weight as pregnancy advances. So, once the metformin has been compared with insulin, Robin demonstrated that of the 363 women assigned to metformin, 92.6% continue to receive metformin until the delivery occurred and 46.3% received the supplemental insulin form. It was found that there were no serious advancements associated with the use of metformin. Effects of metformin in children two years old. In the same group of the women who used this in their pregnancy, what could be seen in the metformin group compared with the insulin group, children had larger with upper arm circumference and subscapular and biceps of skin bone. Total bag mass and percentage body was not different in the children. Further follow up is required to examine whether these findings processing to the later life and whether children exposed to metformin will develop less visceral fat and be more insulin sensitive if yet to come. Metformin, what could be the possible use during the pregnancy in some circumstances, especially once the insulin resistance is very severe, metformin therapy during pregnancy may be warranted in addition to the insulin, particularly in time to diabetes and if the patient refuses to use the IV. But there should always be a caution, there is a placenta transfer of the metformin. Metformin is able to cross the mature human placenta, the special exposure must be considered when treating pregnant women with metformin. No birth weight has been seen in the women who to use the metformin during their pregnancy. Metformin and PCOS already after Amanda has shown the light on that. Balaji and associate has done study and found microsomic baby and small for gestational age. In the metformin group was significantly reduced compared with the diet group. There is another study which shows that the metformin group has a significantly lower incidence of the microsomium, a significant reduction in supplementary insulin use, and no significant difference in better than our conditions. Another study shows that the continuous metformin threat of pregnancy in women with PCOS improves pregnancy outcome by increasing the body death with diabetes and prevention of gestational diabetes with its comorbidity and mortality. If we talk about that, also, it is a very useful drug to control post pregnancy hyperglycemia. Sir, are not this time, sir. Oh, yeah. yeah. it was such a busy day. Yeah. 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 In the district of Nigeria, the meeting was mentioned again. I don't know. 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 I
रूमे रेखे दी सब्जी बाहर क्या खूब भलो चाप कि निजे मत कर कम क्या ना मैं निजे मत कर आर्जेंटिना खेला दोपुर साढ़े तीन टे जुआड़ी 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 